I've been given a present from my boss at work, which was the thousand top adventures in the world. We didn't want to mess around. We thought, if we're going to make this decisive change in our lives, we wanted to do one of the top ten. And so we looked at the top ten, and number one was climb Everest. And we thought, OK, we might die, and it might cost us a lot of money. Then some of them were driving to New Zealand from England, and we kind of like, a bit fun, but also quite boring. Anyone could do it. And then it was cycling South America was an option. And then suddenly there was a bit of a silence, and it was like, oh, we're on. That could be good. Good luck. This is it, lads. Come on, boys. Let's go. Let's ride. <laughs> Woohoo! Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm part of Cusco to Cusco. Through nine months and 13,000 kilometers, we cycle throughout South America, raising money for three incredible charities. We're ready for it. Get us to Cusco. So the charity I chose was Kidney Cancer UK. My dad's got kidney cancer. Um, he's been struggling with it for a number of years, and I felt when I was choosing a charity for the trip that he's really given me everything to be able to be in a position to do this cycle, so I felt like I owed that to him. The charity I wanted to support was one called Right to Play that helps to give sporting opportunities to people who are from less privileged backgrounds and they're from countries around the world, but mainly Africa and Asia, and it helps to give them the resources they need to play sport. My granddad was living with dementia and I felt as if there was no way that I could help him and made me really frustrated. So to have the opportunity to cycle the length of South America with two of my best friends, raising money for the Alzheimer's Society, was something I knew that I had to do and I had to take advantage of at that time of my life. The world's amazing, there's so many great things out there that you can do and see and all we are doing is sitting for six days a week, 12 to 14 hours a day in the same square office. Why the hell aren't we doing something a bit more adventurous? We are in the main square at Cusco, about to start a bike trip. <laughs> so the first day of our 12,500 kilometre trip started in the Plaza de Armas in Cusco. Leo is in charge of directions and it doesn't seem that he's taking us the right way barely, does it? No, it's definitely not the right way. Within 20 minutes, we'd all fallen off our bikes. Right lads, 20k down, how's it gone? Barely, how are you feeling? Awful. <laughs> We're feeling good. Let's keep going. The start of the trip was maybe the worst moment of my life. So in hospital now, put two litres of something into me. And still got another two to go. We started at quite a high altitude. The food wasn't the best there. And so on day two, I found myself having a bit of a breakdown actually in front of the guys, crying and essentially just wanting to go home. It's not good times on day two. I suddenly remember this porter run over to where we were in reception and say that your friend is in the toilet. And I knew he was in the toilet, but he seemed panicked. So I went with him and I found Tom in the corner of a bathroom, unable to stand up, barely able to breathe and in a state of panic. I have no idea why. I can't move my hands or my feet. Barely's going, good lad. And we're going to hospital, round two. <laughs> my body's in genuine shock. It's the second illness um, for myself in, in four days. This is actually really difficult, but um, we've got to do it now, so we'll crack on. The energy's back. 48 hours ago, I was lying in a hospital bed. Um, so to be here with the sun rising with my buddies is fantastic. I haven't had many hospital trips at all, <laughs> which has been great. Fully recovered now. Uh, we're absolutely smashing it. Yeah. Right, here we are, Leroy, on the Salt Flats in the middle of nowhere. Santa de Uni. What are the conditions like? Six o'clock and it's very windy, the tents are up. So this is my sleeping space for tonight on the Salt Flats. The winds have got a bit of a hand. We're about 400 metres into Argentina. Come we're on. Safely. Excited. Yeah, very excited. Gonna be a great country. Been there before, uh, love the food, love the people. In the middle of the mountains and get stuck in a thunderstorm. So just taking a bit of time out in a cave. <laughs> Leroy thinks 
you're safe on a bike through lightning and he's cycling somewhere over there. Listen to that. He's gonna die. Beds employed children to set up his tent. <laughs> We've, uh, we've just left Mendoza for the three day climb um, and we're about an hour in and, and it's absolutely awful and we want to give up. If you look at that, there's no way through it. <laughs> no way through. There's a tunnel, which you can see why there is, but we're not allowed to go through the tunnel because we've got a bike, so we're over the top, so yeah, I'm just feeling fantastic about it. And away you go. Hi everyone. the road. We tried to go around the side of the mountain and instead of giving up, we're now pushing up the mountain, literally climbing over the top. They said it was impossible. But it's not. <laughs> we slept at the Chile and Argentinian border and we're literally cycling through the clouds down the mountain into Santiago. On the way down from Argentina into Chile. Snowing. Tough. So by the time we made it to Patagonia, we were well into the trip and I think we'd found our groove on the bikes and we're kind of fully subscribing to the Juliana Burring philosophy that if you really want to experience the world, you need to get on a bike and see it for your own eyes. And Patagonia was like nothing I've seen in the world. It's half seven, mate. It's half seven, it's raining and we have no brakes. That's how we are. <laughs> it's unbelievable, Steve! I think by the wind! It's pretty bloody windy! Oh, it's so windy that I've just been blown off the road into this barrier. Thankfully it was there. That's why a 66 KOA, day 145. We're homing in on the southern most place in the world. Lads, we're in Ushuaia. <laughs> so from Ushuaia, we flew to the top of the continent, Cartagena in Colombia. Can you believe it? Welcome to leg two. Come on. Leo, how are we feeling? I'm excited. Lads in the Columbia shirt. We're a lot fitter by this stage. We'd learn how to cycle well, essentially, and this meant it was a much more enjoyable time. So we do 12 hour stints a day, but we could actually enjoy it and take the scenery in as well, which is pretty stunning. But for me, the best bit about Colombia was the people. We actually did a couple of, had the time fortunately to go and do a couple of tours and that really affected me, I think, and just reminds me of how lucky you are, but also um, it was quite inspiring how happy the Colombian people are as well. Hi everyone. I thought I'd do a video up here on the bike because there's thunder and lightning in the air. I've been cycling uphill now for about two kilometers, over about 60 kilometers. It's really tough. It's just started absolutely pelting it down with rain. So after Ecuador, we were back in Peru. We were back in the country that we started in. We could feel like we are on the home straight, but it did get a lot more difficult than we thought it would be. It wasn't an easy finish. If you could feel the temperature, it's freezing. What have you got around you, Leo? I've got my sleeping bag. I'm in, sat here at the table in my sleeping bag. It's that cold. We're 25 days out of Cusco. We're freezing our nuts off last night, getting into this town with the pouring rain at 4,000 meters altitude. It was seriously cold. So we've since warmed up and it's a good day. 25 days to go. We're going to make most of every single one of them on the bed. The day before cruise go, how are we feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling uh, very good actually. Morning whistle. What day is it? 
It's the last day. <laughs> <laughs> That feeling of elation was one of the best things I think I've ever felt in my life. It was so much work, so much effort, so much planning that had all come to a conclusion all at one moment. Small individual efforts on an everyday basis lead up to incredible results. All of the cycles that we did on a given day weren't particularly impressive, but what it amounted to was an incredible achievement.